what is going on good people well it is about that late spring time but i call it peak spring time because right now basically everything is green everything is growing nicely um but there may be a couple of things that uh, you may be experiencing or or you may be about to experience here in the next couple of weeks out to a month as the seasons get ready to start transitioning so the first thing is going to be uh, looking at your lawn right now. If it seems to be a little off color, uh, there could be a number of things going on. But one of those things that could be happening is the seed head production. So either your lawn is going through uh, the seeding process or it is uh, coming out of it, which is on the back end of producing those seed heads. Uh, this is a natural thing that occurs uh, in your lawn. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, your lawn just does this naturally where it is trying to reproduce. Uh, the thing is, the seed that it actually produces during this period of time is not viable seed that is going to turn into a new plant. So you can't utilize that as, hey, I'm not going to overseed. I'm just going to use that seed that comes up. Being that we're in this period, one of the things that you really want to do is make sure that your blades are sharp. Uh, even if you're on the back end of it, that means you've been cutting a lot of those stalky and tough uh, plants. So you want to make sure that you sharpen your blades at this point in time as we start to get ready to transition into the next season or as I like to call it the fourth quarter. Uh, you want to make sure that you're going into it with a nice sharp blade. You're getting those clean healthy cuts on the lawn. The next thing is now would be a good time to get ready to get your next dose of fertilizer in. So it takes a lot of energy for the plant to actually uh, produce those seeds and go through that seed making process. So right now we want to give the lawn a good dose of fertilizer. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I like to go half pound ish around this period of time you want to make sure that that fertilizer that you're getting down uh, gets watered in and gets into the soil where the plant can actually utilize it so after expending all of that energy uh, making up those seed heads that really aren't going to do anything for you uh, we want to make sure that we're re-energizing that plant so that it can get ready for the fourth quarter which is going to be june july and august where it's going to need that energy to fight off any disease pressure and also a lot of the rough conditions that our cool season lawns really don't prefer <laughs> The next thing is going to be uh, making sure that your irrigation or your method of watering is ready to go prior to us getting to that fourth quarter as we like to talk about. Uh, you don't want to wait until the summer heat hits and then you're trying to get your irrigation set up and ready to go. Uh, right now we're getting uh, pretty sufficient rain uh, for the lawn to be able to sustain itself. A uh, little irrigation here and there. I think I've watered my lawn maybe three times this season, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, but one of the things is uh, I have done a irrigation audit. Uh, so I've uh, put out some of the uh, little measuring gauges that I've got from Amazon, picked them up for about 20 bucks or so. Uh, and I've placed those out in my lawn to see how much water I'm putting down per cycle that I'm running. Uh, with that, I can know that if I need to make any adjustments to any areas of the lawn to make sure I'm getting uh, the sufficient amount of water that it needs in those zones and in those different areas. The next thing is going to be uh, making sure that you're paying attention to the environmental conditions. Uh, so right now, a lot of the weather that we're experiencing is really comfortable for us humans. Uh, and what I mean by that is we're looking at low humidity, breezy, nice sunny weather uh, that we really enjoy and like being outside. Uh, we don't sweat a lot, but we just get that nice warm sun on our skin. Uh, the thing is, is all of those conditions are conditions that dry out the plant. 
those aren't conditions that are really favorable uh, for the plant when it comes to moisture. During this period of time, you are looking for drought stress. Uh, you may not be seeing heat stress because right now we're only in the mid to upper 70s we'll hit the 80s here and there um, but it's those conditions that are really nice and enjoyable for us uh, but you still can experience drought stress during this period of time so make sure you're paying attention to those environmental conditions and you're also getting your irrigation or your above ground watering system up and ready to go For most of us over the next couple of weeks to a month, uh, the weather conditions are really about to change. So uh, looking at it, we're about to start getting a lot higher temperatures, a lot more humidity, uh, and a lot more of those late evening overnight thunderstorms. And again, those are all combination of environmental conditions that are prime for disease pressure. Uh, so as we start to enter into that season, uh, making sure that you're getting prepared from a fungicide standpoint is going to be very important for your cool season lawn. Uh, I know a number of people that are a little further down south have already started to experience and see some of this. But here in the Maryland area, uh, we haven't really got into that uh, very much as far as for heavy disease pressure. Uh, so in the next coming weeks, uh, you want to make sure that you're getting ready with all of your fungicides and whatever that program is that you're going to use. Uh, so one of the big keys to being successful in using a uh, fungicide program is making sure that you're using multiple modes of action uh, and you are rotating your frac groups. So combining multiple modes of the action uh, attacks the pathogen in more than one way and it also uh, helps to reduce the uh, chances of it building up a resistance uh, to the fungicides that you're putting down. So make sure you're looking into uh, what fungicides you're going to be using and you're going to be rotating those groups in. Uh, when it comes to fungicides, one of the most important things about being successful is correct identification of the disease that you're uh, going after. Uh, a lot of fungicides uh, attack certain pathogens or certain diseases, but they do not cover them all. Uh, so you want to make sure that you identify the disease that you're dealing with and that you are able to go pick out the correct fungicide to address that issue. With the three things that we've talked about here in this video, uh, there's one simple thing that you can do uh, to help improve or to help address all of these things that we've talked about. And that's gonna be picking a uh, A-list variety seed from Mountain View Seed. Y'all know it, I talk about the seed all the time, but one of the reasons that I really enjoy the seed and I really stand behind it is the fact that it does have increased disease resistance, increased heat and drought tolerance, and also lower inputs uh, from a fertilization standpoint. Uh, so with all of those things, I just gave you three things that you should be addressing and making sure you're getting prepared for. But if you have a A-list variety uh, that has been tested and also proven uh, to have improved tolerance uh, to a lot of these conditions, it just puts you in a better situation as we enter into the tougher part of the season. So if you're looking at doing a fall overseeding or a uh, full renovation this year, make sure that you're considering the A-list varieties of Mountain View Seed. Uh, there's a number of different cultivars that they have out there, uh, including tall fescue, uh, ryegrass, and a number of others. Uh, I've been using them for a number of years and I stand behind them and I will be planting some more of it this year. It hasn't steered me wrong from the time that I've been using Using it and I'm gonna stick with what works. So as we enter into the tougher times for our cool season lawns, 
right now is prime time for us to get ready to get those warm season lawns in place so you all know i did a renovation on my pops lawn uh over to uh some mvp genetic iron cutter bermuda uh, my upcoming videos will be going over that renovation process and showing you how we took that lawn from a declining centipede lawn to a thriving iron cutter bermuda lawn so make sure you stay on the lookout for that i'll be walking through the process of how we sprig that lawn and if you're looking to do a warm season renovation it's about go time for you right now so be on the lookout for those videos so as i always say good people just know we work